Good evening and welcome to a new edition of To The Point. Uh, this evening, a special edition uh, marking the reshuffling of the Egyptian cabinet. Nine new ministers are expected to be sworn in at any time. Um, the uh, Egyptian parliament approved this election a few hours ago. And with us on the line is Dr. Pasan Fahmi, member of the Egyptian parliament, to tell us exactly how was the process done? Uh, uh, Dr. Passant, can you hear us? Dr. Passant? Yes, I can hear you. Hello? Yes, Dr. Yes? Passant, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Dr. Passant? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Dr. Passan, can you tell us uh, how was the selection done? I believe nine new ministers were selected. Well, we didn't know exactly how was the selection done, but um, they presented to us the new names with their CVs. And uh, in all honesty, we cannot judge at the present time what's going to happen. The reshuffle was very important. Because most of the people and most of the ministers who have gone did not perform uh, to the expectation of the street or to the expectation of the Egyptian pop, uh, people. So they had to reshuffle. They have, especially in many industries like uh, uh, the investment, which we face a lot of problems and we discussed it with your good self several times. Yes. Uh, we, did, we, did, we didn't have yet the investment law. Uh, with, with, with concerns as well, pricing and inflation, and this as well has to do with all the goods uh, sold to uh, the modest people. So basically, the change touched uh, all the things to do with offering services to the public. But in all honesty, we cannot judge at the present time. And uh, we saw, yes, we, it is true, we saw the CVs, but Um, we lost connection with Dr. Uh, Pasant Fahmi. We'll uh, try to um, uh, call her back. Um, uh, worth noting, just to give our viewers um, um, a clear insight into what took place today, nine new ministers were selected. The concentration was on education, which uh, is quite a big issue, and President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi is really interested in uh, a complete reshuffle uh, and reforming of the educational system. Uh, Minister uh, or Dr. Tariq Shawki was selected as the Minister of Education and Vocational Education. Uh, Minister, uh, Dr. Tar uh, had uh, actually initiated the biggest free education portal, which is due for international uh, recognition any time now. Uh, he is um, very much a believer in uh, uh, the fact that uh, education reform has to start at the very young age, which is why he uh, was very much interested in education rather than higher uh, education. He has a lot of papers written in uh, the field. And uh, he's very much interested in the Finnish and in the Japanese model of education. And most probably uh, he will be incorporating that in the educational reform here in Egypt. Uh, the Minister of Higher Education and Scientific Research was also uh, changed. Uh, Dr. Khaled Abdel Ghaffar uh, would be sworn in as the new minister. And uh, a new Minister of uh, Transportation was also uh, selected, Engineer Hisham uh, Mahdi. Uh, uh, we also had um, a new Minister of Agriculture and Land Reclamation, uh, Dr. Abdel Menaim Abdel Wadud Al Banna, was uh, selected for that uh, field. And worth noting, for the first time, we have three deputy ministers in one ministry, which sort of highlights. Um, the uh, uh, interest or how the president and the Egyptian government will be uh, really topping uh, the um, uh, agenda vis-a-vis uh, -vis the um, agriculture. Um, I believe we have uh, Dr. Pasant Fahmi, can you hear us? 
Yes, but yeah. uh, very difficult. I mean, if you can speak up, please. Um, uh, yes, can you continue with what you were saying about the cabinet reshuffle? You were basically well, saying... We, had, we, we saw all the names this morning, and as I said, uh, it had to do with all the ministries which present services to the public. Yes. From education to health to uh, whatever... Uh, approvisionment, uh, transportation, everything which has to do with the services offered to the public. Yes. So I think the, the minister, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. President is very much concerned mm. with the standard of services where it, uh, presented to the Egyptians. So yes. That's why we had this reshuffle. The price escalation, the inflation, the unemployment, the uh, all what had to do with the normal living of Egyptians, I think the change was in that respect. But in my personal opinion, yes. one of the most important changes was at, at the level of the Ministry of Investment. The, the, the there was a government. mixing, I mean, a, a cooperation or um, um, a joining of the Ministry of Investment with international cooperation. This is a very good step. Why do you because, see it as a good step? Uh, both activities are very much related. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we look at uh, Dr. Nasr, Dr. Nasr has a very long experience with yes. multinational banks, would be the World Bank. She knows how the international investors think, what does he want. And I think she will definitely have uh, an impact on uh, finalizing the investment law because uh, we've been talking about this law for the last two years. And up till now, it is not finalized. Yes. So I think with their experience, especially on the international arena, uh, she will have a great impact on uh, the investment climate, investment environment. Hmm. She will be able as well to source funds because she's responsible for both sides, uh, the international cooperation and the investment. This as well will help her if she needs to get funds from overseas. So I think in general, mm -hmm. it is a good uh, reshuffle. But uh, it is uh, definitely we have to wait to, to see within three months how this will impact on the market in general, especially yes. on the social stability, because uh, we need to have better services for the people. Mm. We have to have control over inflation. We have to have uh, investment to create new jobs. We have to have better education level. Mm. We have to have better uh, uh, healthcare level. So I think we would give them a chance for three to six months, uh, from three to six months, as we uh, told the Prime Minister this morning, mm -hmm. uh, to see uh, how uh, their performance will be different than uh, the, the, the ministers who had left. Um, how do you feel about the Minister of Education, um, uh, Dr. Tariq Shawi? How, how do you see that selection? Because he has a lot of papers and he has an, actually the biggest free educational portal in that venue. How, how do you see him reforming that sector? In all honesty, there is a very big difference between you could have very good ideas, you could have very good papers, you could have certificates as much as you want, can you really apply? Okay. Because you can talk very, I mean, you hear a lot about the Japanese type of education, the American type of education. Can you do that? Mm. This is a big question mark. Mm. So I think the most important part is that we will give them the chance for a short period, which is from three to six months, to see is it a good talk? or they can apply that talk on the ground. Hands-on yes. experience, as we call it, because uh, yes. that's why I said the minister of uh, Dr. Nasr has a hands-on experience. So I think she could move immediately, and she proved to be that, uh, uh, efficient enough during the last cabinet. Mm -hmm. But I want to see on the newcomers as well, not only certificates and papers and uh, ideas, can they apply? Do they have enough funds to do so? Mm -hmm. Do we really that type? We really need that type of sophistication at the present time because education is long term. Yes. You see, if you spend on education, we're not going to gather it tomorrow. It's going to be ten to fifteen years. Mm -hmm. So we need to see: Do they really have hands-on experience or not? Mm -hmm. Um, uh, uh, one of the issues, Bardu, uh, also worth noting, is the selection of the Minister of Agriculture was changed. And for the first time, we have three deputies, which I was just talking about. 
uh, one for land reclamation, one for fishery, livestock and poultry, and one for services on follow-up. Uh, how, how it seems that agriculture is a priority right now? In my personal opinion, if you do not have stability in that part, meaning mm. you could have security system, perfect. But if you do not have a security system for food supply in Egypt, we are approaching 100 million. We yes. cannot keep on importing everything, starting from the loaf of bread up to everything. Mm. So I think concentration, and again, I, I personally believe that we should give more attention and more support to the agribusiness and the fisheries together. Mm. Because we need to have a strong strategy for food supply for the Egyptians. Mm. I repeat, we're approaching 100 million and we're importing everything, almost everything. You import 80% of your wheat, 100% of your, um, uh, uh, how do you call it, oil, yes. and 65% of your beans. Mm -hmm. It's impossible. Mm. You need to, to grow rice, you need to grow many things. So I think with the proper strategy, so I think three deputies, Maybe it is not enough because you need to develop fisheries, you need to develop livestock, you need to develop land. It's, it's a big project for Egypt. Yes. So I, I believe that this is an area where all of us should give enough support. It has to be very well planned so that we don't go into trial and error because without stability in our food supply, we could really risk a big problem in the very near future, especially uh, with the escalation of the prices you are seeing every day. Exactly. Um, we have a new Minister for Supplies and International uh, Internal Trade, uh, Dr. Alim Salhi, and uh, he was also uh, the chairman of the Economic Committee in uh, the Parliament, and worth noting the former Minister of Supply, which is quite surprising that a minister from the old cabinet is selected again. How do you feel about this? Uh, this is a big challenge because that's not an easy job. And we had last week in the cabin, in the in the parliament, a visit yes. by the ex minister, and we discussed all the issues in 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 very much detail. Yes, really, this is a big challenge, and it doesn't have to do only with his efficiency. Mm. It is it, it is closely related to the same subject we were discussing a minute ago, which is the the supply of food and agriculture and so on and livestock yes. and whatever. So the food stability concept in Egypt and uh, the food stability strategy is a major issue. And they have to work more closely together. I am not pro having all those ministers. Mm. Meaning I think that that type of a ministry together with the agriculture, fisheries, they should work very closely uh, together. I was just going to say, the water supply as well. we had so problems in the past due to the lack of synchronization between supplies and agriculture. Yeah, that's the issue, because you talk to supply, they tell you agriculture. You talk to agriculture, they tell you irrigation. So yes. I think the three of them should complement each other and form or put in place a strategy for food supply for Egypt at least to us for the coming 10 to 15 years. Mm -hmm. But we cannot continue to work like this because of the scarcity of foreign currency, the instability in the, in the, in the, in the region and in the world. Europe as well is, is being very unstable. Mm. Look at the United States. So problems are all over. So mm. you need to have between those three cabinet, those three ministries, a very close cooperation with the proper strategy to ensure that the Egyptians will be safe when it comes to, ha to food supply. Mm -hmm. um, also, the change in the Ministry of Planning and Administrative Reform. Uh, Dr. Hal Al Said was selected. Um, uh, uh, it, it was quite surprising because uh, her predecessor, Dr. Arabi, was doing an excellent job, and this was not one of the ministries where a change was expected, or was it? This is a question mark this morning, because as you mentioned, Dr. Larabi was, was doing a good job. He's been there for a long time. He's very well experienced. So we were all surprised, because we did not have even an explanation. Perhaps it is his own will, but uh, we did not have an explanation why he had to do this.
Yes. This is a very important ministry because when we talk about planning, lack of planning is mm. the starting or the beginning of all problems in any country. Yes. And in Egypt, we really need a very comprehensive and synchronized planning strategy in all aspects. We Definitely. talk about health care, we talk about education, about housing, about anything, food supply. We need to have proper planning. And this is a very important ministry. Mm. So I think this is a heavy portfolio. And uh, it is, we have to wait and see how Dr. Hala will, um, will, will, will work on this one. Mm. But that's a very complicated one. And it's, uh, it's an important one. And as you mentioned, uh, nothing has been said about why Dr. Al-Arabi uh, had left. Mm. Perhaps he has another, uh, he will take another job, I don't know, but nothing was being said this morning about why he left. Mm -hmm. um, it, the fact that uh, we're, we're swearing in a new um, uh, nine members in a new cabinet, and let us not forget uh, a few months ago, uh, Prime Minister Sharif Ismail with members of the cabinet, including the ones that are uh, exiting right now, put together a plan uh, which the parliament approved, a plan of action, so to speak. And Dr. Arabi had a strong influence in that plan as a minister of planning. How do you see this progressing now that new faces have been put into place? That's, a, that's an important question because you know that we have a strategy 2030. Exactly. And we have an agreement with the IMF. Mm -hmm. uh, changing during this period in major uh, ministries uh, is risky. Mm. Because any deviation from what has been said, uh, you are not free to change the way you want because you have a partner which is called the IMF, is a lender. Yes. So uh, it's a critical period. You see what I mean? Yes. The plan has been approved by uh, the cabinet, by the, the, the parliament, but on the other hand, you need to implement this, now for the purpose of implementing this plan, you need a very strong, qualified, experienced, and professional team. Because you cannot afford having any type of problems occurring in the middle. So we talk about 2030, that's a long time down the road. Exactly. So I think a comprehensive uh, uh, strategy was there. But is the group available and the group understand clearly the content of this strategy, especially I'm talking about the economic part, mm -hmm. uh, understand clearly how they're going to operate that strategy and how can they really plan to achieve, mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's uh, something to be seen. We, we still don't know. And that's why I said at the beginning, we need to watch them carefully between three to six months to see how the performance, especially on macro level, meaning the macro indicators. I'm not going to talk about micro indicators, at least the macro indicators, the, the deficit, the inflation, the unemployment, uh, mm. the reserves, uh, the, the size of debt compared to GDP, and so on. Mm -hmm. So this uh, is still a way to be seen. Uh, uh, the fact, as you just mentioned, that we're going through the second phase of the IMF loan and you're just saying we're going to wait and see three to six months. Um, how does this work with that? Can and also when you say to... reduction in prices or a controlling even in prices, one of the preconditions is further uh, uh, lifting of subsidy. Or am I when misreading the scene? When we with the IMF, a major issue was always there. Mm. You achieve what you want, but you have to ensure a social stability. Yes. Because any instability on the social level we could create a chaos, and at the end you will not be able to comply with the terms and conditions agreed upon. Mm. So no matter you want to increase the prices, the share, lift the subsidies, whatever, do whatever you like, but you have to have always in parallel a comprehensive plan to ensure a social stability. Mm -hmm. And this is a very critical point. And this because is going we, to be Dr. Ali himself. To remove subsidies, we ha when this will cause inflation. You have to float the currency and it causes inflation. Yes. But on the other hand, you have to ensure that this doesn't affect negatively uh, the modest class. And mm -hmm. that's a very difficult equation. Mm -hmm.
Um, um, Dr. Uh, Passant, was the agreement on the ministers unanimous? Were, I mean, was there any concern about the cabinet reshuffle? Um, I cannot, we cannot judge before seeing their performance. As I said, the CVs, any CV could be very attractive, could look brilliant. But the thing is, can you, can you really sit down and, as we said, work with your hands? Mm. Do you have a hands-on experience? It's not a matter of writing CVs and, uh, as you mentioned, he has a lot of certificates and I don't know how many PhD. And can, you co can you really apply that? Can you really cope with the present situation? Mm. In Egypt, the situation is very critical and it's complex. It's, not, it's easy to talk, but once you're on the ground, this is another story. Mm -hmm. The second thing, which has been always a problem in the Egyptian government, many governments before, can you really work as a group? Mm. For instance, when we say we want a, a food strategy, we have felt talking to the ministers at the parliament. You talk to the minister of agriculture, you cannot feel that there is a harmony with the, the minister of irrigation, and then you see the supply, the same problem, the international trade. The concept of group work major problem I think in mm. any cabinet we have met with in the parliament yes. you feel that anyone every one of them has his own shop and he's working on it but that doesn't go like this they are all interrelated especially for instance on the economic group exactly they're one group and they have to coordinate together and they have to sit down and discuss so this is the thing which is worrying us all this mm. is a critical period will they be really uh, uh, capable of working as a teamwork and achieve together, or is it going to continue the same way? Um, what about the selection of Dr. Hisham Sharif for municipal development? And this is also a name that was not expected. He was the former well, chairman. Not expected in that field. You see, I, I expected Dr. Sharif since a long time, but I mm -hmm. think this is a in very municipal tough development. Field. Excuse me? In that uh, ministry, in the municipal uh, development ministry, did you? No, not in that ministry. And that's yes. why I said he's a qualified person, but this is a very tough job. Mm. And it means as well, uh, did, did, I don't know. We have to leave it and see how they're going to perform. Mm. It means a lot of cleaning. Yes, I mean, uh, <laughs> we have a lot of problems. The people, the, mini, the cabinet has been changed. This reshuffle, as mentioned by the Prime Minister and Mr. President, has been done because we want to, to offer better service for Egyptians. Mm. And most of the cabinet which have been changed, that they're responsible for, really affect the daily life of Egyptians. Yes. And this, the cabinet Dr. Sharif now is responsible for is the most, I don't want to say the most complicated one. Yes. You see? Because yes. it has to do with all the governorates, it has to do with all levels. You saw the problems, for instance, last week uh, concerning the, the cafes. and You have a daily list of problems for Egyptians where we need to have someone who really understands how it works and could put solutions. But I hope he would be capable to do that as a group, if he can group people with him from the ministries and from the governorates, they can solve the daily problems of Egyptian. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Passant, before we let you go, maybe your expectations for the dollar. Uh, there is talk that within a month or so, it can hit 15. Uh, you will be surprised, as I told you several times, I'm not worried about the dollar. You were I'm for the floating way a very long time ago, I know that. Yeah, I am worried about the Egyptian economy. If your GDP will grow, if you're going to produce your food, if you will manage your economy properly in, on a macro level and on a micro level, mm. this will strengthen your currency. You mm. see? But the dollar itself, you cannot let it go up or down by a decree. Mm. The economy has to move properly, and then the currency is a, react, is a, is a result of all that. Yes. But uh, to cut it short, I am optimistic about the coming period because at least now we saw the proper way. We need to develop agriculture. We need to take care of uh, um, fisheries. We need to take care about the modest people. Well, now we are looking in the right direction. 
which mm. was not the case in the past. Mm -hmm. Uh, Dr. Passant Fahmi, thank you very much for your uh, fruitful uh, input and we wish you thank the very, you very much, uh, yeah, best you. of luck. Um, uh, the, the, um, uh, worth noting as well, the Minister of Parliamentary Affairs was also uh, changed. Uh, Mr. Omar Marawan was selected and to give him a, maybe a proper introduction because uh, the Minister selected for Municipal Development uh, is someone with quite a different uh, background aside from the fact that he has this IT background maybe he also Dr. Hisham Sharif served as the former chairman of the Egyptian uh, cabinet support uh, and decision uh, center um, and uh, he as Dr. Pesant just highlighted he uh, is being entrusted with maybe one of the toughest uh, ministries and one of the ministries that really has uh, quite a lot of things at hand uh, since it deals with uh, the different uh, governance and different municipalities and really uh, quite uh, a large reform and facelift needs to be done um, on uh, that uh, sphere. Uh, the Minister of Planning uh, and uh, we have with us, I believe, uh, on the line, Dr. Sharif al Khurebi. Uh, Dr. Sharif? Yes, uh, good evening. Uh, yes, good evening, Dr. Sharif. Um, uh, Dr. Sharif, um, taking in light the changes that took place today and the fact that we're uh, heading for uh, the second phase of the IMF loan and we're concerned about the value of the dollar, how do you see all this uh, coming together? Um, uh, how will this change reflect on uh, the IMF plan and the dollar and what have you? Uh, okay, first, uh, happy Valentine. Thank you, thank <laughs> for you. For you and for all uh, uh, Egyptians. Uh, of course, about uh, uh, the, what happened in dollar last uh, week, I mean for about a week now, Mm. It is uh, reducing in front of uh, of Egyptian pound, and if you remember, I was expecting this, but actually it started early because I was expecting to start in March. Why March? Yes, because why March? Uh, there is a good, I mean, a lot of good uh, economic uh, uh, success stories happened already. One of them is uh, a lot of Egyptians now, mm. I'm, which they are working outside Egypt, they start to get again the trust in the Egyptian economy. Yes. We attracted them through the impressive uh, package of uh, you know, uh, deposit in the bank with the impressive interest rates. Also, we encouraged them to... Uh, to start again transfer their deposits from outside to Egypt because after the stability, the key, the magic key for having all of the economic affairs to be stable and to be and, and uh, to be developed as we, have, we are witnessing right now is the stability. Yes. Stability in Egypt in the last month, alhamdulillah, thanks God, touch wood. Touch wood. We don't have any serious conflict from any uh, direction. Besides also uh, the good news uh, related to the back of uh, uh, the Russian uh, tourists to Egypt. Also, we have... Uh, A number of countries. Sorry? A number of countries said that they will start back to Sharm el-Sheikh specifically. Exactly, exactly. Yes. So the good news and the stability, uh, it shows also that the trust in the Egyptian economy is moving. Also, a lot of people, they are also, uh, you know, uh, optimistic about the change in, uh, in the cabinet. Also, it will make another reflect because actually the the, the reduce of the dollar value in front of the Egyptian pound today, it was, uh, it was very big. I mean, yesterday it was 17 something. It reached today to 13, less than 13.20. And I think from tomorrow it can go even uh, under 16 pounds. So all of this, this is the magic key. What will make the dollar... Uh, 
I mean, going down and down again because the fair value for the dollar in front of Egyptian pound never exceed uh, from 10 to 11 Egyptian pound. And I think we'll reach to that uh, exchange rate very soon. Very when soon, when, when is soon? Taking into account year. how we're progressing. Uh, I think, I think uh, starting from uh, now up to July, we, can, we will go for sure under uh, 14 pound. Okay. And by end of the year, we'll reach to 10 to 11. Okay. Uh, but under one condition, and that condition is, is the continuity of the stability we are having right now, mm. and also the performance of, you know, uh, Sahar Nasser is the Minister of Investment and International yes. Cooperation. H how do you feel about the amalgamation of those two ministries? Uh, of course, this is, you know, it's okay for me, because Sahar, she, she did a, a success, Minister Sahar, she made a success story uh, in international cooperation. And if you look at investment and international co uh, cooperation, mm. it is the same. So I'm expecting from her, she is a very, very aggressive uh, in positive way, I mean, aggressive uh, lady. Mm. She did a lot. I'm expecting from her to have the investment file in the same way of international cooperation. So uh, all of this, it will lead to more stability, more confidence in the Egyptian market. Uh, also, the back of the tourists from Europe uh, today, Denmark, uh, uh, you know, uh, removed any uh, condition to go to Egypt for her citizen or for its citizen. So we are, we are expecting more and more positive things. Yeah. Uh, positive equal stability, stability equal economic, or not only economic, sustainable development. Yeah. Sustainable development, which is economic, environment, and social. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm very, very optimistic. I'm expecting, inshallah, to have more good news. But uh, the message should be for our uh, citizens, for the Egyptians, all of them, they should be keen about the stability of their country. Yes. And they, start, they should also start to participate in this development by hard work and whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, since you're very much into the business of uh, livestock and have you, the fact that now we have a new Minister of Agriculture and we have a deputy specifically for livestock, poultry and fishery. How do you see that? Because this is the first time we have three deputies in one ministry. Of course, if, if, since we have uh, a, min, a new Minister of Agriculture, so we should expect that we are going to have, because I, frankly speaking, I don't know the man, but when I read his, it's his CV about uh, five minutes ago, mm. uh, it shows that he is a good, uh, it's a good choice. Mm. Uh, for his deputy is one for uh, the agriculture and the other one for livestock uh, and fattening, growing. I think it sh he should, uh, both of the deputy ministers, especially that one related to uh, livestock, uh, he, uh, she, I think she is a, uh, a lady, she should work very close with uh, uh, Sudan because uh, we, uh, the only uh, magic key for solving our problem related to uh, beef Yes. Is Sudan. Sudan is very close. We are now, we can get, uh, so it's a matter of cooperation between the two ministers mm -hmm. uh, or the two ministries in Sudan and in Egypt. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can have also this good atmosphere between the two leaders and the two countries. Uh, so I think this is very, very important because growing that sector here in Egypt only, we cannot do it. Mm -hmm. Um, generally speaking, how do you feel about what uh, happened today and how we're progressing? Uh, sorry, I can't, I can't get you. Can you? Uh, I have. Uh, I need. Uh, I can't hear the last question. Uh, I'm asking. It? Generally speaking, how do you feel? How do you see us progressing? Generally speaking. Uh, the, the, the progress, of course. In uh, if you are talking about Egypt as. As a whole, you can you can feel it even in 
in the, the streets. We don't have the panic which it used to be last month. Mm. And people now they start to be optimistic related to this dollar issue. Yes. And uh, we should have, and uh, I'm asking the Prime Minister, uh, there is many, uh, uh, I mean, decrees or uh, we, we are expecting from the cabinet right now. So we need it to be as soon as possible also to show that there is a serious and real change in the policies, not only just in people. Mm -hmm. Um, Dr. Sharif, before we wrap up, maybe I'd like to ask you to direct a message to um, uh, the uh, potential foreign investor that is looking at us right now and maybe questioning how we're moving or why should he come and invest. Uh, we have a new investment, uh, uh, investment law. We have um, uh, an excellent, uh, successful uh, minister who now has also the portfolio of investment in her uh, lap. Uh, how do you see the investor uh, uh, re reacting to all this? Okay, uh, about investment in, uh, in Egypt and after uh, having the new investment law, which uh, we uh, which allowed will be very soon because it is not raised yet. Well, so I be. think with a new investment law and with uh, an aggressive and clever investment minister, uh, Dr. Sahar Nas, mm. I'm expecting, I'm expecting number one, three things that should happen. Uh, we should have a very big international investment conference, and I'm sure uh, Dr. Sahar Nasr can do it, and mm. uh, she will find a very big support from a lot of people. I myself, I'm putting uh, all of my experience either in Africa or Arab world under her service related to this issue. Yes. Number two, we should also have uh, what we are calling uh, Egyptian investment uh, promotion delegates. We should have, uh, we can depend on this one by having a delegation consisting of uh, business uh, community, I mean business people also from the ministry of uh, investment and to go with well, this one will go to far east that one will go to east europe that one will go to west okay. europe and whatever it's like a door knock. we should prepare this visits and this delegations agenda we should prepare it in very very proper way sorry it, 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 this is similar to the door knock but like an economic or an investment door knock am i understanding uh, this right uh, uh, yes, I, 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 I agree with you. I okay. agree with you. Okay. The, the last thing is we should have uh, what we are calling in, uh, an, a, a proper investment website, which we should, uh, anyone want to invest in Egypt, even he can fill the applications from any place in the world and uh, put, uh, raise his questions or his inquiries and when he will come, everything will be ready just to sign and to start his business. We don't want to waste time in that, uh, in this issue. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Sharif al khuribi thank you very much for your uh, fruitful you input. You are welcome and happy Valentine's Day. Thank again. you very much. Same to you and uh, to all Egyptians and non-Egyptians. Uh, happy Valentine. And uh, regardless of who comes and who goes, one thing is very, very clear. Egypt has a very, very strict um, developmental strategy. We're working towards this. Regardless of the small battles or hurdles that are always put in our way, uh, we will continue to shine and work through it to the end. On that note, I wish you a very pleasant evening. We'll see you same time next week. Until then, good night.